launched in uh, March, and uh, so. cockpit was fairly cool but i imagine it's been sitting out there in the sun this week and uh, it's warmed up quite a bit and uh, but they have drinking water once they're strapped in do they have access to a drink they probably uh, can't yeah they can get some water up until the asp gets ready to leave and they get ready to close out the uh, hatch everything will then be stowed for launch uh, and then they just have to wait until they get to orbit and they'll have drinking water very handy right when they get there It looks like uh, Bueno, Mike Good's getting ready. The uh, guy with the number three has been, uh, that crew has actually been working with these guys all through training. They're assigned uh, kind of to the crew when the crew's assigned, and they show up at the, all the training events where they're suited and kind of go through the whole choreography every single time, make sure the suits are fit, fitting just right. These aren't individually uh, custom-made, tailored suits. They are kind of off-the-rack pressure suits. They're not. We, they're uh, not tailored to you. No, we try to find one that's the closest fit, and these guys do a really good job uh, making sure that they you're you're nice and comfortable and that you got all the equipment and materials you need and they know just how it's supposed to fit you so they've been following along with these guys for quite some time hawk's trying to get a look at something uh got a couple mirrors going on and uh yeah it'd be nice to have a little bit of audio maybe it wouldn't right now <laughs> I guess when you can't turn your head, can't move around, a mirror's not a bad thing to have. It's yeah, there's actually some panels Tony has to get a look at on his uh, lower right-hand side that uh, there's some... OTC, MS-1, contact. MS-1, this is OTC. I have you loud and clear. Good morning. Big G. Good morning, Mother. Good to hear you. Glad to have you on board this morning. Garrett Reisman getting a comm check. Yeah, so there's some actually some talkbacks on some switches back behind, uh, right over Tony's right shoulder that he can't really turn his head to see with the helmet on. MS-1, come check. MS-1, this is NTD. I've got you loud and clear. Good morning, Garrett. Good morning, Jeremy. Good to hear you. And they'll use these mirrors uh, for taking a look at that. Houston, MS-1, come check. Hey, good morning, Garrett. We got you loud and clear. How us? Good morning, Scorch. You're sounding especially handsome this morning. You scared me, dude. Thank you for using your sexy voice. Mike Good has his, uh, he's been taking off cooling, has his comm cap on, and he's making his way in through the hatch of Atlantis. It's actually, you can see the hatch there with Atlantis written down the side, and... 1531. Excellent, thank you. And so Mike Good coming into view uh, in the MS2 seat, and uh, Chris Cassidy will start working on him here shortly. So it's not always the same closeout crew members in the white room from flight to flight. It varies some if yeah, they're vary. assigned to a mission. Exactly. The guys, uh, the guys who actually, the suit technicians, I guess is the word I'm looking for, uh, which is part of the kind of the closeout crew. The suit technicians are basically assigned to the crew, and uh, they'll be working more than one mission at a time. But they're the guys who are coming out to training events whenever we're suited, uh, wearing these orange suits. They'll be there supporting, and uh, they really uh, know the equipment. They kind of know what's worked and what hasn't worked, and they do a really outstanding job um, getting us ready to fly and making sure we have all the proper equipment we need to get up there safely. Well, it looks like they're all aboard now. Yeah, it sure does. Uh, getting Bueno strapped in, and uh, they're getting some preparations made to the hatch, and uh, looking like a good day. And all systems on. Two on two, I need to verify uh, that the flight crew loaded at this time that you're ready for the crew module closeout.
So crew module closeouts, what's involved in that? What's, what gets closed out? Well, there's a lot, there's a lot of uh, modifications uh, that need to be made. You can see where Chris Cassidy's standing. He's actually standing uh, on a place that you would never, ever stand during a mission. They actually have panels that he can walk across there. They'll pull all those out. They need, the, they need these, the panel covers so they can stand and reach and help get folks strapped in and reach the switches they need to reach. But right where he's standing are our rear windows looking out of the payload bay, and just below that are all the controls for our uh, uh, sp space station, I mean, space shuttle robotic arm, our uh, docking ring, our uh, other switches. So they have those are covered with wood panels that they will pull out and um, uh, once they're done with the, the strap in. Any other equipment and gear, making sure the crew is completely ready to go. Uh, you can see they have some ventilation ducting, which will need to be pulled out. There's some... Um, the, the way they were able to crawl in on their hands and knees to get into the orbiter because of the, the size of the hatch. They're going to pull out of the equipment out and close the hatch and make sure they got a good pressure check and be ready to go. So it's a fairly long process. Uh, they need a rather exhaustive set of procedures to make sure they get everything just right and that the vehicle's ready to go fly, that nothing's been left behind. And how many are uh, of, the, of the closeout crew customarily in the orbiter at this point? Well, Typically, you have the ASP, which is with the number two. That's Chris Cassidy, who's an astronaut. And uh, then it looks like there's one of the suit techs, and I can only see his foot there. So typically, just uh, depending on who they're working on, uh, they'll have one up working the flight deck, and then maybe a, a guy or two down in the mid-deck, making sure those guys are ready. But it looks like the mid-deck guys are already strapped in and ready to go at this point. And uh, they really do a nice job of cinching you down nice and tight. You're not going anywhere by the time these guys get done cranking on those, uh, cranking on those straps. So uh, they want to hold you in a nice and tight against the seat. Make sure you don't go anywhere. So they're doing some final tweaks to Mike Good's uh, comm mics, the uh, booms on his uh, mic, and getting ready to look to getting ready to put the helmet on him. Actually, you have a couple guys who worked as a uh, Asked. So uh, Ken Ham, the commander of this mission, was the guy who strapped uh, strapped us in for uh, STS-119 last March. So he was the lead ASP. He made sure uh, everything was in good shape, getting us ready to go fly. And it's great to see him uh, moving over to the left seat and getting a chance to command his own mission here toward uh, the end of the shuttle program. After you're all strapped in and ready to go, are your thoughts pretty much still oriented toward what's going on on the countdown, or do you have a chance to let your mind wander a little bit to what might be going on later? Or how does the thought process sort of evolve as you get later into the count? I think uh, for the most part, guys are sitting, listening to the, the chatter on the comm loops just to keep us to keep a, the kind of the big picture as to where you are and what's going on, what issues are being tracked, uh, what's not being tracked. Of course, uh, you're also taking time to wave into your buddy's mirror so they get a good view for your family to watch on TV. But uh, by and large, you're just paying attention to the, the milestones to see what's going on outside the orbiter um, and if there's anything going on that you need to be aware of that could affect the launch. These guys uh, down in the mid-deck, uh, you can see they have the straps hanging from the lockers. Those are the lockers where we actually keep our food and uh, a lot of our equipment, materials, clothes, and they have those straps which you know, your arms get kind of uncomfortable sitting there on your back, and you use those to kind of pull and help yourself and rearrange your back and stretch out your arms a little bit, and then to pull yourself out of your seat later if you need to. NASA will be there uh, shortly. We're still removing items from the flight. Looks like they're just finishing up the, uh, up the, the comm equipment on Mike Good, so we're probably going to hear a comm check from him here shortly. Copy that. Okay, we just heard him confirm they're still taking some items off the flight deck. Yeah, anything that's not secured, uh, if it's not taken out, uh, when you the minute you get up to orbit, you'll find it pretty quickly because it'll be flo floating right in front of you. That's uh, what's pretty amazing about the process is it's you know like I said, little just under three hours before the launch, and it's a uh, they they're starting getting ready. They woke up at five this morning, and the process started just like the process has been going on here for weeks. Um, folks. 
different centers across the U.S., along the Atlantic coast, even Wallops Flight Facility. I know folks are there getting ready uh, over in Europe. And uh, these guys got started at 5 in the morning, and when the uh, mains and the solids light, it's only an eight-and-a-half-minute ride. It's a pretty short trip. Um, it seems shorter than a lot of miles. Yeah. <laughs>